Intamin is one of the largest roller coaster manufacturers in the world. They're based in Liechtenstein. They were founded in 1967. And chances are, if you've been to an amusement park, you've ridden one of their attractions and you might not even know it. They have hundreds, maybe even thousands of rides all across the world. But today, I want to focus on their 15 best roller coasters that I have experienced. So unfortunately, no Conda or Hyperion in today's video or some of the ones in China. I would love to experience all of those, but I have had the chance to do many of their world-class attractions. And because some of them are so different, it was definitely a challenge to come up with a ranking for this. So I'm going to run through the 15 that I have selected, then I'll name off some honorable mentions at the end. But I want to start things off with heading to the Netherlands for Walby Holland and Goliath. This is a mega coaster, about 153 feet tall, custom layout wrapping around a lake, and probably up until Untamed Open, this was the signature ride at the park. It's got some great airtime moments. It's kind of the Superman ride of steel of Europe. I'm a big fan of how one of the moments banks at 121 one degree angle. It's called the Stangle Dive. Intamin has been doing a lot of these high banking turns as of recently, but Goliath opened back in 2002. At the time, we had never seen anything like it. And the ride still kicks. I mean, it is an awesome roller coaster and just barely made the cut for our top 15. At 14, we have Storm Runner at Hershey Park. This is the first of our launch coasters that we're going to be featuring here. And Intamin has many different kinds of launches. Storm Runner is a hydraulic launch. So the train attaches to a catch car that's attached to a cable. They pump some fluid through it and the train takes off straight into a top hat about 180 foot tall drop at a 90 degree angle it's one of the weirdest layouts out there and I think that's why I love it so much is it is so bizarre there's this really disproportioned Immelman like maneuver there's the world's only flying snake dive which is when the train rises up high and then does this rollover maneuver diving to the ground it's super cool I always get excited to ride this attraction which is why it made the cut just one spot ahead, though, is the world's tallest roller coaster, King Dakar, Ka, standing 456 feet tall. It also happens to be the fastest in the United States, and I really do love this attraction. I know it gets some hate because a lot of people aren't a fan of the over-the-shoulder restraints, or they're not a fan of how shaky it can get. Personally, they don't bother me. It is a very short ride experience, but there's just nothing like going that fast and that tall. It's pretty awesome, and it's my second favorite roller coaster at Great Adventure. But at the number 12 spot, we have the world's first giga coaster. It's Millennium Force at Cedar Point. And for a while, I know this was considered by a lot of people the world's best roller coaster. It won the Golden Ticket Award for number one for a long time. And personally, I'm one of the people that thinks this ride is overrated, but I will always acknowledge that it is a good ride. First of all, it's a very long experience, and you're hitting speeds over 90 miles an hour. I mean, already, that's pretty cool. I gray out almost every time I hit that first overbank. There's some good airtime moments. It's a true classic, and I know the reason why many people like to visit Cedar Point to ride this thing. Just barely missing the top 10 is our next launch coaster, and the first one to use LSMs. So instead of using hydraulic fluid and a cable, this uses magnets. It's not quite as punchy of a launch, but in Red Force's case, you still reach a speed over 100 miles an hour. It's not quite as tall or fast as King Dakar, Ka, but I really like how this attraction feels because it's the same sort of take, but they made some changes. Obviously, the launch feels different. The drop feels more like a drop because while King Dakar Ka and Top Thrill Dragster go into a 360-degree spiral, this just twists to the side, so it really feels like a vertical drop. So I really enjoy this thing. And at the number 10 spot, we have Pantheon at Busch Gardens. Gardens Williamsburg. This is the latest and greatest Intamin to open, and it's actually at one of my home parks. I've been going to Busch Gardens for years, and I think it's the best coaster there. While I certainly wish it had more theming, the layout is very fun. It launches you basically seven times. What happens is they have the main launch section broken up by an airtime hill in the middle, so it kind of sends you through these different boosts at varying speeds, forwards and backwards, there's a massive spike and a beyond vertical drop with an outer bank, stall, wave turn. It is really, really fun. It's an attraction that Busch Gardens really needed and is a great addition to Intamin's portfolio. So we talked about King Dakar. Let's head back to Cedar Point for its sister coaster, Top Thrill Dragster. And this has what I believe to be the best launch in the world. You reach 120 miles per hour. It's again using a hydraulic launch. It feels punchier than King Dakar. It has lap bars, so you're more open. And it's also more photogenic. It's right in the middle of Cedar Point. It is an icon. It's one of my favorite coasters to experience because I still get nervous sitting on that launch track. Your heart just starts racing right before you take off. There's very few attractions that do that for me, so I'm a big fan of Dragster. And coming in at number eight is Fantasia Land 
Trans Terran. For some people, I know that they'll say that this coaster should be higher, and I get the love, and I'm one of those people. I think this coaster is stellar. It's a full package experience with a really long ride duration, some incredible theming. There's rock work all over the place. Terran weaves all around itself, diving through tunnels, flying past buildings. It's hard to tell where this coaster is going next. I love this thing, and I'm thrilled to see that more coasters like it are opening up around the world. One spot ahead of it is another multi-launch coaster. This one has the most launches of any ride in the world. It's Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. Now, while Terran is definitely more thrilling, Hagrid's is a family coaster, but it's not a mild one. This is a story-driven experience and one that you will remember forever. It is so beautifully done up until Guardians open. This was the most expensive coaster on the planet. There's animatronics during the ride. You're weaving through the forbidden forest in the wizarding world of Harry Potter. There's a backwards section, a drop track. It is so cool and it's also a really good night ride. This ride puts a huge smile on my face. There really is nothing else like it. Coming in at number six is Maverick at Cedar Point. Yes, the third Intamin coaster to make this list at Cedar Point. But don't worry, this is the last one. It's an Intamin blitz coaster so it stands just over a hundred feet tall and stays mostly low to the ground but this thing throws you around it is a little beast small ejector airtime hills fast-paced inversions an incredible second launch and with those short trains that allows it to do these fast-paced maneuvers that you wouldn't be able to otherwise this is a coaster i always get excited to experience Taking the number five spot is my favorite Intamin coaster that I've experienced in Europe. It's Exhibition G-Force at Holiday Park. You know, people have their problems with Millennium Force. I think Exhibition G-Force fixed all the problems that Millennium Force had. While it's not as tall, it's in the same sort of style, but it takes all of the maneuvers at a faster pace. So it's got tons of great airtime, a wicked first drop banking to the side. When you're in the back, you just get thrown. You're flying through the woods. I mean, this thing just puts a huge smile on your face. I love this thing. And for a ride that opened in 2001, over 20 years later, it is still running fantastic. At the number four spot is a ride that's at my home park. It's the coaster I've ridden more than any other in the world. It's Intimidator 305. And I could talk about this thing all day, but even after riding over 800 coasters, I still believe this is the most intense ride on the planet. I have yet to experience a coaster that gives me the feeling that Intimidator 305 does while riding it. You experience this hardcore gray out where you can't see anything, your body goes numb. And if you haven't been drinking a lot of water or maybe you're a little dehydrated, it's pretty hot out, there is a very strong chance that you will actually pass out. Full on blackout and you'll snap out of it halfway through the coaster and you'll have completely forgotten that you're riding a roller coaster. It is insane. And it still to this day shocks me that this ride even exists. And I would not blame anyone if this was their favorite coaster by Intamin or just favorite coaster overall. I get it. But did just barely miss my top three. At the number three spot, we have El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure, the only wooden coaster to make this list. Intamin made four prefabricated wooden coasters. The only other one that I've done is Balder up at Liseberg, and that was just nowhere near what El Toro is. This thing has one of the greatest first drops on the planet and some insane airtime hills. Not to mention, it's just a plain photogenic attraction. The way it stands in Grey Adventure's skyline, oh my gosh, like that much dense wood, this thing makes an impression on you. And it is wild. When you get off El Toro, you're just going to want to do it again and again and again. I cannot get enough of this attraction. And I really had a tough time deciding between this and our number two coaster, Sky Rush. I go back and forth on Sky Rush or El Toro, but what's interesting is that I know there's a lot of people who are not a big fan of this coaster, primarily because of the restraints. I think the layout is absolutely insane. This coaster tries to get rid of you. It is throwing you so hard, and like Toro, it also has one of the best first drops in the world, but this one feels very different than El Toro's does. Sky Rush's first drop has like a kink to it, so it almost feels like it drops you twice. It also has a scary fast lift hill, like what a way to start off an experience. It's an insane ride, and again, one of those coasters that I look at, I'm like, I can't believe this thing exists. It's very intense, probably too intense for a lot of people, but I love it. Which brings us to our number one attraction. It is Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure. And I think the reason why this takes the number one spot for me is it really is the full package experience. The layout is so well done. Every element hits. 
It's a long experience packed in with a story. So it's well themed in the queue and there's theming during the ride, but doesn't sacrifice on the thrilling moments. It's hard for a roller coaster to do that, but Universal pulled it off with this thing. There's four different inversions, an awesome top hat, two launches, and some wild bank turns. First half, compact weaving around a raptor paddock. Second half, spread out flying over this bridge into the Mosasaurus roll, which I believe is the greatest inversion in the world. It leaves you breathless. It might be the best ride experience in the world, which is why I have given it the number one spot. But I do want to give some honorable mentions before we conclude things here. I got a shout out Accelerator and Knott's Berry Farm, another really good hydraulic launch coaster that just didn't quite make the cut. Same with Furious Baco. This one stays low to the ground. If it were a bit smoother, I'm sure it would have made the top 15. Fahrenheit, this rare vertical lift coaster. Hershey Park has a lot of great intimates, and this is one of them. I also really enjoy Superman Ride of Steel. This is that Six Flags America and Darien Lake. It's a bizarre layout but good fun i just wish there was more stuff where those straight sections are and then also i speed at mirabellandia if it didn't have those hard over the shoulder restraints and a more fast-paced thrilling second half then i'm sure that would have made the cut too but bottom line is there's a lot of great intimens out there and maybe i'll come back to this list after several more open and i get around to a couple i know there's a great one opening soon at park Astreeks. formula rosa is the world's fastest coaster that's an intimen still need to get on that thing i'd also love to ride taiga at linamaki and the more I write these things, my opinion also changes. But the bottom line is Intamin continues to blow my mind and come out with some of the world's greatest attractions. And I can't wait to see what they do next. So let me know down in the comments below what you think of this list. If you agree with me, post your thoughts down below and stay tuned for more rankings here at Coaster Studios. And we'll see you next time.